Hello, my soccer universe. Yes, I'm wearing the gaudy uh, Köln jersey because Köln has a prayer. <laughs> they can make it. But to be honest, my mood is rather dejected after watching Lusk. And you see, for the first time since I'm doing videos, I don't have a Lusk jersey back there. I have them all down here and they're all in black. Does not look good. There's a, such a negative spiral there that I'm not sure. I think only winning the cup final next weekend could probably stop that one from happening but more on that a little bit later um so that's my main headline from austria um we'll look at it at, at, at the end because there was lots of stuff ha happening in germany as i said Köln get another win uh doubling it up and most of the results also going their their way so Köln really having give giving yourselves a chance of staying in the league and i would be Really happy uh, with that. Unfortunately, another team that I really like, Werder Bremen, is hellbent to go down at the moment. But you know, it is not yet decided. It's a very open race. Um, we did not get any other certainty because Bayern actually lost to Mainz and Mainz completely rid themselves of any trouble uh, going uh, for, for, for going down. They are probably the sensation of this year in, Ger in Germany. Uh, really, that's they're playing well. They, uh, they have structure and they keep winning ga uh, games. And despite having a horrendous final program, where I think they have to play Leipzig, Wolfsburg, and Frankfurt, something like that. They probably have enough points, and they have to play Hertha as well because Hertha is still in quarantine. Uh, speaking of all these, we also have a pretty uh, exciting race now for the top four spots where two out of Frankfurt, Wolfsburg and Dortmund will make it in the Champions League and one will not. Dortmund actually getting a huge win over Wolfsburg in typically Frankfurt fashion via Holland. And yeah, uh, Leverkusen be beating Frankfurt. It's all very, very, very tight together, and everyone's now comparing the the remaining games. And there, you would say it's Frankfurt and Wolfsburg, but because Dortmund has a pretty tough program. But the way Dortmund has been playing is a lot not great, but they get it done, and that is also something that speaks volumes for them. And then today, Leipzig um, postponed. Bayern's title party even further by winning over Stuttgart and Gladbach really getting everything all the negativity off with them with a 5-0 win um, so yeah let's uh, talk about these games um, Augsburg Köln I actually watched this one while doing the rant vi video in case you didn't realize <laughs> both of the videos that I posted this week uh, week we we gonna did while watch, watching that game and the first half went all current way I mean it was Köln playing nice but also Augsburg definitely not showing up the defending was atrocious there was no uh pressing there was no attack there was no going between the passes they just were standing there still the first goal by duda is world class skiri with a nice cross and he one times is from the edge of the box into net one of the greatest goals uh you see all weekend and probably of the month uh absolute screamer and also you know Köln not playing in any of the red or white no they played this taste I mean the yellow jer jerseys uh then really a goal where Köln I think had uh, 20 passes in conse uh, consecutive pa pa passes with no one of Augsburg really pressing them or in any way it all ends uh, with Kainz making the 2 to nil, and he was one of three options there and then uh, I think they even hit the, cro the cro crossbar and involve also uh, sets up Duda for his second and it's 3-0 after 30-30 minutes. It could have been more. However, at least Augsburg hit the crossbar, although that probably would not have counted later on. It must have been very loud in the uh, locker room at halftime because there were a few changes for Augsburg and um, in the 54th and 62nd, Augsburg gets it within a goal. And at that point, I mean, it was already le le leading up uh, up there. There were really some chances chance there for Augsburg to even equalize. So it could have well be 3-3. Couldn't really need to sell themselves. But once they sell themselves, around the 70th, 75th minute, Augsburg never had any chances. And I think if Köln would have uh, played it more clinically, they could have more added another one. So overall, a fully deserved win for Köln. And uh, let's see where it goes. 
the Freiburg Hoffenheim game was a lucky draw uh, for Fre Freiburg. It was m most notable is probably one of the last games of uh, Manuel Greffe, the referee, because he's getting, getting too old. And it was remarkable that after the game, all the interviews were, we should keep this re referee. He's, he's probably the best referee around. Why are we keep get, getting rid of good referees? And that speaks for referee. And I have to say, whenever I saw him, I he has one of those, he has this silent authority uh, that is so rare with referees these days. I said it already in the intro, Mainz against Bayern. Bayern with a win could have clinched the title. No. After three minutes, Burkhardt already, already made me mix it 1-0. And yes, Manuel Neuer did, did, didn't look over a straight shot at him. The sun probably a little bit deep and uh, he gets only with his hand and then it bumps into the net. Um, and Mainz fully deserving, fully there and Bayern not so fully there. Um, seemingly, you know, it has to be said, a lot of games have been played this season. Really, a ton of games have been played this season. So um, that is always a mitigating circumstance. So uh, we have to uh, take that in, in, into account. And so the, the Bayern can, can, can always play great. But Mainz really had the focus right and really gave Bayern trouble. And when Kwaison made it 2-0, it was more than well deserved. In the second half, uh, yeah, Bayern was trying, but could not get much, much going. It was closer than Mainz would make a third one. Um, only lay, lay down the let off, and then in the 94th level, he also gets his goal, where he probably still has a chance. I think he needs to know four in uh, four, five in four games or something, uh, four in three games to match at least Gerd Müller's uh, 40 goals, which seems maybe potentially doable. Werder Bremen, absolute. Uh, horror show, uh, Poyan Palo with a hat-trick, 50th, 50th, 30th, 67th, pulling Union up, uh, Gabriel Salas in the 82nd, gives, uh, get, gets a goal back for Bremen, had a little chance, but Union fully deserving of that one. I'm all, uh, when I watch Union games, they always have at the Science Center a, a nice banner where they kind of show what's wrong in the football world. This week's banner was also, uh, you know, give back the game to the kids and the amateurs. That's, uh, I, I'm always curious when I see that. Wolfsburg-Dortmund, uh, a game that was much more even than the scoreline would suggest. I would even go so far to say if Holland would not have played for Dortmund, it might as well have ended in a Wolfsburg win. It was that even. However, Holland was the difference. Um, or in the 12th, I mean, a horrible back pass from Reid Lebaku, who was already pressed, but you cannot play it back this way. It's intercepted by Holland, who then puts it into the net. Um, with also some, some assistance from the um, uh, <laughs> from the defense. However, Wolfsburg was really well in, got well, well into the game, and especially in the second half, they were pressing like crazy. They did not have clear-cut chance. I think there was one from Wout Weyhorst where you think Norm normally would do it, but Dortmund is definitely Wolfsburg's bogey team. Wolfsburg can play almost well almost against anybody, but when it goes to Bayern, Dortmund, I think starting with Leipzig, those are the, the teams where they just, there's a mental blockage. They just cannot overcome these big, bigger teams. Um, you really thought that Dortmund will get into serious trouble when Bellingham was sent off with the second yellow. The second yellow was definitely more the dark side because the first one was rather, yeah, not so much. Um, and while Wolfsburg was, was pressing, the Hood intercepts the Wolfsburg uh, attack on his own box, plays a ball to Holland, who takes it in his own half and then sprints free on goal. I think he has four touches on, 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 on the way and just slams it in the in, in, in internet like, like it's the easiest thing to do. Because we know when you run free on goal, you usually have many thoughts in your mind. He did not. And it's 2-0 that settled the game for Dortmund. It was, was a humongous win. Because if Dortmund would, would have lost that, uh, Wolfsburg and Frankfurt are pretty much in the Champions League. But now, not so much. It is getting tight. Dortmund is only two points behind Wolfsburg and also only one point behind Frankfurt, who have uh, also lost their, their game. They were totally in fear in the first half to level Leverkusen, but uh, could settle the game. And then the goal comes really out, out of nowhere. I mean, uh, Kevin Trapp, especially in the first uh, half for Frankfurt, made huge saves. Uh, and then in, in a second, uh, Diaby plays a uh, long ball to Bailey, who from a very acute angle pulled, puts it in where the goalkeeper doesn't look 
all that well. And um, Alario then shows a great finish. Also, uh, assist by Bailey makes it 2-0 in the 80th. And yeah, maybe that more or less settles, settles the game. However, uh, Andre Silva in stoppage time gets one back. And when Frankfurt was pressing just from... No, no they were not pressing. It was more or less from the kickoff. Uh, Demi Bay takes a shot, it's deflected and it goes in. It's 3 1 Leverkusen. Probably overall a deserved victory, but in the second half, when the goals were scored, it, that's when uh, it seemed like the game is finally even. But you know, in the end, I think it was a deserved victory. Um, and yeah, Coach Hütter said after the game, um, I knew that we need to win three out of four games. Uh, to finish out the season and they have three winnable games although I think the next one is probably the toughest one there uh, also Leverkusen Frankfurt was a game that never ended in the goalless draw in the Bundesliga his history that's a rarity uh, today Stuttgart uh, got an early red red card and Leipzig uh, gave them two uh, score two and Gladbach 5-0 over Bielefeld is another result where Gladbach the big rival of Köln is actually helping Köln with uh, really dousing Bielefeld and pulling them into trouble looking at the standings I mean up top nothing has changed so much except that Dortmund has significantly increased their chances of qualifying for the Champions League Leverkusen only outside chance but it's really 57, 56, 55 one of those three will not make it and um Gut feeling says actually Wolfsburg because Dortmund is a good for him. Wolfsburg also doesn't have that easy of a remaining program, uh, it has to say. But Frankfurt also, the next game for Frank Frankfurt seems win winnable, we'll, we'll see it. But um, that's the one where I think every, a lot can hinge on. Uh, the, ne the, the next round has quite some big fig fixtures there. You see Mainz moving up only 1%, 1 of going down at the moment. That's pretty impressive. Remember, at the beginning of the season, they were way down there. I think uh, at the halfway point of the league, they had seven points. They have now 34. Unbelievable. Really a huge turn to turn around. And they have nice choices. I have been thinking about getting a Mainz jersey as well. Um, but Bremen, on the other hand, a team that seemed safe for the longest of times. Now, I think seven in the, in the row lost. And that takes a big dive, and they take a big dive down now, 41%. Uh, the form says that they probably could fall into the 16th spot, if not further. Uh, last season, at the same time, they're only two points less. So that had, and, and there they barely scraped uh, about. But you know, we have also Bielefeld in the running, and you never know with Hertha Berlin, who has now three games in hand, but they need to be played at such a tight schedule that you really really have to worry for them as well if they can keep up that pace um i'm actually worried about Hertha as well um adjusting a table despite all the games games enhanced does not actually change a thing and if we go expect it thanks with the games Hertha is still expected to go out of this trouble and at the moment it's current ahead of Bremen and Bielefeld going down but you see 33 33 33 it's really 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 tight Schalke already down, Bayern more or less champions and we see how close it is for this final Champions League spot with Dortmund just because they have the toughest program, a little bit of an outside chance there. Mainz safe more or less, that's unbelievable. As I said, the next round which will be played in two weeks and we'll talk about why uh, in, in a bit. Anna Mainz Hertha is played on the third and then on the sixth is Hertha against Freiburg. I will add this in here so they have two games so they will make uh, up to two, two games ahead of this round and then probably they moved the Hertha Bielefeld game is they moved on the ninth so I have to change uh, things around here so yeah uh, then so we have then the, uh, the Friday game in Stuttgart Aug Augsburg does not really do much Dortmund Leipzig Huge game, a potential preview of the cup final. Uh, we also have Bayern against Gladbach. It's a classic, however, will not have to do much. But we see a revolve. We get home to Union. Not an easy game. Um, we also have Frankfurt against Mainz. Mainz is a team that no one, absolutely no one at this moment wants to play against. I don't think this is an automatic win for Frankfurt, although they are fa favorites. Uh, if we go for re relegation, you saw already the Hertha games. Um, Bielefeld might, that Hertha-Bielefeld game might be a big one there as well. Um, and then Köln has to play Freiburg, and Freiburg also has not much to play for, so... 
Bremen against Leverkusen, not an e e e e easy one, so lots to go for. Bremen also has a game uh, in the midweek um, in the Cup semi-final, a home game against Leipzig that they probably will not win, and then Dortmund against Holstein Kiel, and we'll see, that's uh, on the weekend, and we'll see how uh, things will go there, will be rather interesting uh, for the German Cup, it will probably Dortmund against Leipzig final. In Austria, I really did not see much this week weekend. Uh, Austria Vienna got the license. Uh, that was probably the the biggest news from the from from, from the weekend. Uh, and they beat Admira Wacker. Um, Hartberg only drawing points, so Austria is actually as we'll see top top of the table there. And also Reed, a team from Upper Aus Austria that actually would like to stay in there, although they are considered by last rivals, get a win over St. St. Burton. Uh, today the games repeat uh, makes the score then very clear late uh, later on Salzburg despite 10 men outlast Wolfsburg to 2-1 and what can I say about Sturm against Lask. Lask is really in a negative spiral at the moment. Uh, started already with this loss to Tyrol then they you thought they had it uh, but it, their games are so unlucky and this was one that they had, they had was hap, 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 happening as, as, there as well and then our sports manager is now and the investigation of third-party ownership of uh, many last players. So very, very negative. Lots of injuries. Um, you see flashes of what they could play. I think the first 20, 20 minutes last was the, by far the better team. However, they could not cope with the speedy Yeboa back there. And the first goal comes in the 2029th was more or less an own goal. Where then the goalkeeper got in, injured, then a um, stupid penalty came away in the 45th, and that's when I stopped wall watching. Yeboah then scores another penalty in the 50, 54th, and very late on Potsman gives them, um, uh, gives Lask a, a goal back. But to, 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 to be honest, I am very apathic at, the, at this moment in time about Lask. I was even thinking of not watching a game, it was two, two, two and a half, a game that I probably sure should have been drawn at the half, to be honest. I said they're not gonna come back from that. There's just too much negativity around. And so they are now overtaken by Sturm Graz. It's five games left to play in, in the season. And I hope they can at least hang on to the fourth spot and maybe, maybe, just maybe win the cup final against Salzburg. But that will be tough. As I said, Austria will probably qual uh, qualify for those playoffs. Um, in the expected final standings, you see the negative spiral that uh, Sturm is actually a favorite over Lask to finish uh, in third place. There is a midweek round where all the fixtures are turned around, so Lask has to play again against Sturm. I'm not looking forward to that one. And I'm not going to do pro probably a, a video because we, I will do all, all the cup action that, that's coming up. We have on Saturday then the cup final Lask against Salzburg. It would be the first title for Lask since 65. Although at the moment I don't see how this will happen. So we'll see. I am not very happy about the way things are going for Lask at the moment. So yeah, let me know what you thought about the Bundesliga this weekend. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell icon as it will remind you whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!